Do you have a weapon in TF2 that you just hate using? You know the weapon is objectively fine, maybe even good, but by god you just cannot bring yourself to actually use it. Well, I do. There are a few weapons in my 5500 hours of playing that I've realized I just despise the feel of. The weapons themselves are good enough, a lot of people can pub stop with them, but every time I have to slap them into a loadout, all the dopamine in my brain instantly dries up. So while I work on more labor-intensive projects, I wanted to rant about the TF2 weapons that, even though they're relatively balanced, are an absolute drag for me to use. I am going to put one restriction in place for this video though, and that is no conventionally bad weapons. As much as I dislike using stuff like the Kaber, everyone dislikes using stuff like the Kaber, so that wouldn't make for a very good discussion, now would it? I will try to pick at least one weapon for each class, but that's more of a guideline than a guarantee because my internal rage towards video game items is not always symmetrical. <gasps> okay, let's go. Starting off, Scout has a few weapons that make my teeth hurt, but I think the weapon that I hate the most out of his entire kit is the Force of Nature. Now, like I mentioned, the Force of Nature is a pretty solid weapon once you've gotten the hang of it, but this thing clashes with my preferred playstyle for Scout in like five different ways. By far the worst part about it is the air knockback. When used strictly for mobility, having the ability to jump higher on command is pretty cool and does come in handy pretty often, but when used in combat, this mechanic makes Scout insufferable to play. My preferred playstyle is to mash the space bar and fly around the enemy's heads like a mosquito. It's admittedly annoying to play again, sure, but it's very effective and I'm usually super sweaty when I play Scout so it all works out. But when you try this strategy, strategy with the force and nature, yeah, not so good. You literally cannot be airborne when you fire this weapon like at all, lest you instantly lose your velocity and fall face first into the barrel of a rocket launcher. That fact alone makes me hate using this weapon, but that's only one of several gripes I have with it. The knockback mechanic is also super frustrating to deal with on the enemy's end as well. One thing I really like about the soda popper, the force and nature's sister scatter gun, is that you can delete people extremely quickly if you can aim both of your shots. But with the force and nature, the knockback from the first shot usually propels the enemy out of your effective range meaning the two-shot delete button strategy is much less consistent to pull off. Scouts who like this weapon have just told me that you have to check where you're blasting enemies and that launching them to nearby surfaces solves that problem entirely. But the fact that this is even a problem that needs solving says a lot about the weapon. Why would I force myself to play around the force of nature's jankiness when I could just use the soda popper and call it a day? Speaking of just using the soda popper, one of the more petty reasons I dislike the force of nature for is that in comparison, it feels so slow to reload. This is entirely because I main the soda popper and I'm just using to how it works, sure, but the reload discrepancy is not exactly convincing me to switch over to the dark side anytime soon. The only reason that I ever use the Force of Nature outside of mobility is to do a little trolling with the knockback, but as soon as I start getting wrecked, I immediately switch to something that's actually worth using instead. Hey, so, uh, editing Great Blue here, I have an admission to make. I used the Force of Nature for this video to get some background footage, and I had a lot of fun with it, so I kinda go back on what I just said. I still don't like it on... A lot of maps and when I'm like specifically trying to win, it is annoying, but if you're just memeing around with it, it can be a lot of fun. So I will at least concede that it does have its merits and I don't hate it anymore. All right, okay. The other scout weapon that I just like enough to rant about is the Boston Basher, or the Three Room Blade if you're a cool kid, because it's what I like to call a cortisol inducer. Or in simple terms, trying not to miss makes me fucking stressed. This will in fact be a repeating pattern where weapons that punish missing make my bones ache, but the Boston Basher is a special kind of hell because it relies on melee hit detection of all things. And that's really all there is to it. Trying to hit people with melee weapons without ever missing is not fun and I don't like it. I know the other reason people use this weapon is to increase their jump height with the self damage, but compared to something as consistent as the atomizer, the randomness of the knockback just makes me frustrated more than anything. Well, I can certainly see the benefits of using it, this just isn't a weapon that I'm too fond of. Ah, the first truly controversial pick of the list. I hate the Beggar's Bazooka with a capital H. The one thing that truly makes me rage in first person shooters is getting screwed over by randomly determined inaccuracy. Accuracy. With stuff like pistols or shotguns, it does exist but isn't too bad because it's pretty easy to mitigate. With revolvers, it's significantly worse, making even the most basic of aiming become a chore at times, but overall it can be counterbalanced by tap firing so it's not the end of the world. But the point you put random inaccuracy on a rocket launcher is the point that I really start to have problems. The intended use of this thing is to predict when you're about to be attacked, I guess, and then load up the chamber to ambush the enemies you're about to encounter. But considering that you can't hold the rockets in the chamber, what's the point? You're trading off perfect accuracy 
accuracy and a reasonably sized explosion for the chance to kill enemies slightly faster if you can get lucky and predict them correctly. The way that the proponents of this weapon will tell you to use it is to tap fire, so that way you have a rocket launcher that never actually has to reload. But that only works if people are literally right in front of you, since rocket and accuracy makes hitting things almost impossible at mid-range. Trying to hit anything outside a melee range is a coin flip at best and a Las Vegas casino at worst. It can be awful at times. And what's arguably worse than the inaccuracy is that if you happen to encounter someone and don't have any rockets loaded, there's a half-second firing delay on each of the rockets you want to shoot. Everything about this weapon is idiotic to the highest degree from a design perspective. I have tried using this thing. Believe me, I have tried. But I just can't. The inaccuracy and the firing delay make this thing feel terrible to use. The only meaningful contribution in my gameplay that the Beggars has ever given me is the ability to do mid-air rocket jumps by overloading the chamber. But even then, it's still a less consistent alternative to doing advanced tech like pogoing or wall bouncing. I genuinely cannot figure out how people like this weapon enough to get good with it. Every single stat this weapon has makes it feel worse to use in some way or another. If you're a diehard Beggars Bazooka fan, please let me know what positive experience you're getting from using it. It feels like an abstract form of self harm, and if that's the case, please seek help. <sighs> anyway, sorry about that rant, I got a little carried away. Anyway, I was looking through pyro items and realized that there aren't any that I really dislike using. If I had the name one, it would probably be the Dragon's Fury due to the increased air blast cooldown and janky hit registration of the fireballs, but overall it's just a weapon that I've not practiced that much. Even if the air blast delay is a definitive problem with this weapon, the damage you can get outside of that is great if you can aim. I don't want to roast the thing just because I'm the one who's bad at using it even though that's what I just did with the other two. Hey, the loose cannon, there's another one that I just like using. It's kind of hard to explain, but the loose cannon falls into the uncanny valley of weapons for me. On paper, you'd think this thing would be overpowered. It can one-shot light clashes, fling people around, and provides insane mobility if you charge it up. But when you look at the effort actually required to get the one-shots, compare the mobility with any of your secondaries, and notice that any of the other grenade launchers which have a much higher DPS are easier to use to boot, you notice that this weapon is very niche. Occasionally, I'll throw on the cannon when I'm feeling extra funky just to get that extra dopamine rush that comes from double donking. But for every one double donk I land, there are at least three times where I think to myself, I would have killed that person if I was using anything else. The loose cannon is kind of weird to rant about because while I acknowledge that I'm not the best with it, I don't ever feel the urge to practice with it either. Some people are insane with this thing, but the effort required to get such a fractionally better reward just doesn't seem worth it to me. While I do sometimes use it just for fun, I always end up switching to something else after a round or two. Not my least favorite weapon to use by any means, but not one I typically want to equip either. The other demo man weapon that I've slowly become bitter toward is the Eyelander. The Eyelander seems like such a weird choice for this list since it's an incredibly strong weapon in the right hands, but the cold harsh reality is that I don't care how good it is, I don't have fun using it. At the point where I become the most powerful, when I've collected the max head bonus and I'm traversing the map with great speed and power, life becomes an endless sequence of mental anguish as I try to avoid those who wish me harm, or something like that. Trying to keep five heads is stressful, okay? All it takes is one sniper, one croc, it, one heavy main standing there with his only brain cell keeping his minigun revved, and all the progress I just made is flushed down the toilet. I much prefer swords that either have zero commitment like the half Zatoichi or that complement grenade launchers like the Claymore. The Islander being extremely vulnerable to even a single mistake or random crit just makes it not fun to use in my book, even if it is objectively one of Demo Man's best melee options. I was originally going to skip heavy because I never play him and all of his weapons are the same, but there is a weapon that I can think of that makes me mad every time I try to use it. I don't know if I'd go as far as to call the Holiday Punch good by most metrics, but it is a weapon that a lot of people like using, so I might as well talk about it. The main complaint I have with these stupid gloves is that they're like three layers of randomness you have to work through to get any kind of result. In order to make someone laugh, your hit has to connect, which is already a challenge with melee weapons, the person you're punching has to be on the ground, and the game has to determine that you are in the 90 degree quadrant behind them, which is way too many things to gamble on for such a specific result. Oh, but what if you get a random crit, I can hear you ask? Well, first of all, that's still another layer of randomness, and second of all, you would have instantly killed the person you're attacking with anything else. Outside of very specific instances like Ubers, making them laugh is an unnecessary step in the process. The holiday punch can be kind of fun to meme around with, but only kind of. And even then, getting these things to work properly is like playing shuffleboard on a cruise liner. Wait, what? <laughs> That's how I had it written down. What does that even mean? Why did I write that? Moving on to Engineer, the only weapon that I truly dislike using is the Widowmaker for very similar reasons to the Boston Basher and Islander. If you miss, you are punished. I get that it's for the sake of game balance or other things that people tell themselves to sleep at night, but brother, I'm a university student. I don't need that kind of extra stress in my life. The real objective complaint that I will give is that I love spamming chip damage shots with shotguns, which you really can't do with the Widowmaker, and I'm also not a fan of being locked into using the pistol as a secondary. 
but mainly I just don't trust my spastic shotgun aim enough to actually do well with this weapon, even though when I actually do use it, I end up doing fine with it. Skipping medic because I've genuinely got nothing and moving on to sniper, the weapon that is frustrating me more than anything else in his kit is the Huntsman. Contrary to the feelings of most, the Huntsman just doesn't feel rewarding to me when I use it. I never feel like I'm hitting the headshots I want to hit, and the headshots I do end up hitting feel more like dumb luck than anything. I get that the luck aspect is kind of the appeal to Huntsman, but I prefer weapons that are consistently good over weapons that can get a cool clip once every 20 lives. I have warmed up to the Huntsman a little bit since I started playing Class Wars regularly, and I've even gotten to the point where I can hit the things I'm aiming at on a regular basis, but I'd still prefer using things like the Classic over the Luck Bow since at least it's hit scan. Saying that I hate the Huntsman would probably be an over-exaggeration. More correctly, I am occasionally and mildly disgruntled when I use the Huntsman, but this is just one of those alternative playstyle weapons that never quite had the chance to grow on me. I can't outright despise it for that as much as I dislike using it. And finally, we get to the Spy, which, fair warning, I am not the best at. Uh, however, in the times that I do play Spy, the weapon that I interestingly gravitate away from is the Dead Ringer. The Dead Ringer certainly has its utility when paired with super aggressive playstyles like MLG Trickstab Elite Gaming, but I prefer a much more common stealthy approach to the class. Not that I don't appreciate a good trick stab every now and then, but overall I find the value that the stock watch provides is just much more valuable than a get out of jail free card and a long cooldown. Stock allows me to get behind the entire enemy team on a whim, which is super helpful for the way that I prefer to play, but it can also be used to get away from people who've sussed you out if you're smart with your cloaked movement. But the Dead Ringer only has about half of that utility, and it's really only used to make hyper aggression more viable for the spy mains who do 20 inputs per second while walking in a straight line. If I played Spy more, I'd probably have a more fleshed out opinion on this thing, but I don't, so I don't. Plain as that. There aren't a ton of weapons in TF2 that I outright hate. One of my favorite things about this game is that nearly any weapon that you want to equip can get decent mileage if you're skilled with using it, but naturally, the more I play the game, the more entrenched certain play styles and habits become. And when I come face to face with a weapon that directly challenges those habits, the only thing that I can often think while using it is how well I'd be doing had I been using my main. Call it an opinion, call it a skill difference, I don't really care. These weapons piss me off regardless. So anyway, that was my extended and potentially unhinged rant about video game items. I am curious of how my opinions stack up to everyone else's in this instance, so if there's a weapon or two that you feel strongly about, or if there's another weapon that you think that I should give another try, comment which weapon and why. Your comments do mean a lot, and I promise that I will read them, unless you're British, in which case no promises. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. If you hated this video, then you're really gonna hate Spider-Man for the PS2, and most importantly, have a good one.